So um, hello and welcome everyone who are watching us um, right now and who will watch this Facebook live video um, later. I hope this live stream is visible and audible to everybody. Uh, my name is Ignas and I am a communication specialist at Study in Lithuania and this is the second installment of uh, Student Stories LT series which we started a month ago and which we hope to continue on in the future. In this series of live interviews we'll um, talk with international students who are currently studying or have studied in Lithuania in the past and we will talk about student experience and what is it really like uh, to be a international foreign student in Lithuania and we'll answer all of your questions that you might have. Um, so keep your eyes open for the further uh, Student Stories LT videos on our Facebook and our Instagram. But today, um, today I would like to introduce you all to our guest, Anna Rodriguez. Um, hello, Anna. Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Um, Anna is from Portugal and she is a PhD, so doctoral student, studying electrical and electronics engineering at Biomedical Engineering Institute of Kaunas University of Technology. So um, she's currently swiped with work, right? Because it's your last semester as a PhD yes. student and PhD, yes, no right. joke, right? Yeah, yeah, last semester, <laughs> only a few months to go. <laughs> um, is there something that I haven't said in the introduction that you would like to Say it. Um, no, I think you mentioned everything. That's uh, basically my my academic uh, background <laughs> in Lithuania. Okay, um, I think the subject, the study subject that you are working on, is fascinating, and um, we will talk about it. Um, we'll just get into it a little bit later. But um, let me ask you something simple. Um, so you're from Portugal, sunny, beautiful Portugal. <laughs> how did you first hear about study opportunities in Lithuania and how did you first end up here? Um, so I actually I came here uh, I did a BEST course uh, for those people that don't know uh, BEST is an organization uh, by students an European organization and each uh, branch usually organizes some courses that are um, uh, very low cost and you can apply for those courses. They are usually one week long and you just come to a country. You don't have to pay for housing. You're usually housed in some uh, university uh, dormitory or so and food is also provided. So it's a quite a cheap way to get to know new, uh, new places. So I came um, in a best course uh, to KCU and back at the time I was already searching for a place to go to Erasmus and I thought well Kaunas looks nice and it's quiet and it's also not very expensive which was one of the things that I was considering so I applied to to come here. <laughs> what were your first impressions when you got here to Kaunas and, and to KTU and was being an international student sort of everything that you expected it to be, or, or maybe not? Um, well, I was a bit used to getting kind of that uh, environment that you used to see in the movies, um, like college kind of movies. And uh, I guess here in Europe, it's not really like that anywhere. Um, and back when I came here, because I did my master's, so I'm here in Lithuania already for almost six years. Uh, so I've been here quite long and there was already some international students, but not as much as there is today. Um, so my experience was like a bit shocking, but in, but also in, in the, the, the good way. Like I remembering feeling that the city was very different from Porto where I was studying. Um, also like the whole Soviet era was <laughs> a very uh, different experience because I uh, in Portugal we, we don't have this uh, kind of environment but everything was was okay um, nothing nothing major to complain about but everything was okay <laughs> okay let's um let's talk a little bit about the subject that you are studying because when I you know when I say like electrical and electronics engineering or biomedical engineering it usually says very little to people who are like myself who are unfamiliar 
deeply unfamiliar with, with these subjects. So to be very specific, and um, let me read this so I don't mess it up, and just to paint a picture of what PhD students at KTU actually do. So for her PhD work, Anna is developing algorithms to detect abnormal blood electrolyte levels in hemodialy hemodialysis patients. I practice. Yes. <laughs> so Anna, please tell us more about it and what, how, okay. how does it work? Okay, so um, I am uh, by nature um, a biomedical engineer and I work in the, the field of signal processing, digital signal processing, more concretely in the, air, in the area of cardiology. So I deal with the heart signals or the electrocardiogram or the ECG, which I guess most people have done one before, so you kind of know what it looks like. Um, and um, uh, so... Um, in, in, in my specific field of research, we have the problem that is hemodialysis patients. And also for people that don't know, uh, hemodialysis patients are patients that have no renal function left. So that means that their kidneys do not work. And they rely on this procedure on hemodialysis that they have to, to do uh, three times per week uh, to take all of these, uh, normalize all of these electrolyte levels, uh, remove certain toxins, everything that the kidney does for us that obviously they cannot perform. And uh, one of their um, um, one of the main problems is that they can get uh, very quickly these abnormal electrolyte levels that either are too low or too high, depending on the electrolyte. And uh, um, and these uh, when the electrolyte starts to rise, it leads up. It has no um, uh, like the, the patient cannot feel it. Um, but what, what it does is that it reaches to a certain point that even though the patient cannot feel it, cannot feel it uh, the heart will start to contract more abnormally and it will eventually lead to arrhythmias and can lead to a very uh, bad outcome that is sudden cardiac death where the patient needs to, to um, it's a medical emergency. Um, so what I'm trying to do is trying to find a way uh, to just, uh, if we take like a device, like those wrist-run devices that like the Apple Watch, mm -hmm. and the patient can just take uh, the electrogram, electrocardiogram on, on, on their own, and from the electrocardiogram, we'll be able to calculate these uh, values of electrolytes and set an alert saying if the patient is okay, or if the patient has to go to the doctor because needs to start dialysis earlier. So I tried to like simplify it <laughs> as I, much as know, I could. It's a, it's a difficult process, but it's, you know, it's so, sort of making the future of, of, uh, health and the future of medicine better yes yes exactly um we are going through the era of personalized medicine and wearables and um uh, prevention is more needed than just treatment itself um because the only way that you can solve uh, a kidney failure is either by getting new kidneys or just by doing hemodialysis. But what we can do is that we can try to monitor these conditions and we can try to find a way to detect them earlier before something bad happens and therefore increase the life expectancy and hopefully the quality of life of these, uh, these patients. So you're probably a, uh, a native at, at KTU's laboratories now. You probably spent a lot of time there. Uh, yeah, obviously now, not now in the pandemic, uh, <laughs> I do it at home um, and I'm lucky enough that uh, because I only work with signals, um, I basically just, and I develop algorithms, I obviously, I need uh, just a computer, a powerful computer uh, to program and that's it. Um, and the doctors, every time that they can, uh, with the pandemic, they can recruit some patients, they... Um, just collect the the signals for us and then I do my research about it so that's uh, pretty comfortable <laughs> and I wasn't very affected by the pandemic on that that regard I was gonna say because uh, now that you meant you since you've been in Lithuania for six years you know what it was like before the pandemic and what is it like now and 
you know, Portugal is very different from Lithuania. Portugal is, as I said, bright and sunny and Lithuania is as beautiful as it is during the, the summer. It could get quite dark and gloomy during the winter. How do, yeah. you, how do you deal with uh, the darkness and, and the sort of cold, gloomy days during the winter season here? <laughs> so I have to confess that it's not very uh, easy. Uh, for example, as much as it's beautiful to just go to walk in the forest while it's snowy, um, I personally don't really like snow. <laughs> it's uh, I always had, uh, when I lived in Portugal, I always thought, oh, I want to experience the whole snow. And I came here my first winter and after a week, I was like, no, <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> um, uh, but um, it's uh, the the falling dark really uh, uh, early. It's a bit difficult. Um, I usually just go to work out, and for me, that's uh, enough to just give me uh, how, how to say to just stabilize my head and uh, uh, avoid a seasonal depression and. Uh, and that's that's it. There's uh, not much that I can say about it. Uh, <laughs> it's um, it's a it's a new experience for people that obviously are not used to it. But you do get used to it. It's you can look at oh how will I live with such cold weather? You just do. <laughs> you start <laughs> you start to get used to it. You just do. <laughs> what is one thing that you like the most about Lithuania? Um, I like how small and quiet it is. Um, maybe this is a bit boring for, for some people, but I, I enjoy the being able to just walk around and not have too much noise around me. Like the Southern people, we Portuguese and Spanish, we can be very loud. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's a good thing that you can just go to a park and listen to the wind or to the water and uh, because people are not so loud and speaking. Um, so I really enjoy the calmness of it. Um, and I also enjoy that because it's also quite small you do have more opportunities in a way. So it's easier for you to navigate through things because it's uh, still not very competitive so less of a headache <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I want to sort of remind everybody if you have questions for for Anna about the work that she does or or living in Lithuania feel free to ask in the comments and I'll uh, yeah, I'll, I'll announce if, if there's if there's any questions. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, I guess difficulties. What was or still is the hardest thing for you as an international student being away from from your home country and um, in a different language? Yeah, I think the language barrier is still uh, the most difficult part um, in a in a way. Um, as much as you can experience some cultural shock because um, uh, you will see that Lithuanians are usually more reserved people and they are not so, uh, not saying they're not, not, not nice, I'm not saying that, but it's like if you meet a person from the southern uh, countries, they are usually just more open to receive you with a smile and just uh, be more talkative uh, when they don't know you than than the Lithuanians. Um, but once you pass that initial shock, um, the only thing that remains is really the language barrier. Um, somehow there is uh, probably Lithuania, it's uh, still only now starting to get used to have so many foreigners around and so many students. And now I think it's a bit easier to even find um, uh, services that you need where someone will speak in English or, or you know, that you can communicate. Um, it was very difficult when I came in. It's, uh, uh, it wasn't that spread out and uh, Lithuanian is also not necessarily an easy language to, to learn. Um, 
and then when you want to continue to learn it you kind of have to do it on your own because um there also aren't many classes for advanced uh, Lithuanian language uh, which is something that i miss because i do well in a class in a class like environment um and there's obviously a lot of beginners lithuanian for beginners but not like lithuanian b2 c1 level um, and that's definitely something difficult but i i hope that it will change in the, in the i future. think i think yes as you mentioned because uh, lithuania i think is still a relatively new destination for tourism as well as as uh, studying abroad and only in the past decade, you know, people started to really um, discover uh, sort of Northern European and Eastern European countries, the post-Soviet countries. And I think, yeah, I think um, as, as years will go by, more and more people will come to study here, sort of spread the good, good message. And um, there was this one question um, in our uh, chat. It says, was it difficult and was it a long process to convert your degree before you started PhD studies. But I think you, since you studied bachelor and master's in Lithuania, you didn't have to convert anything. Um, so I didn't study my bachelor here. I studied in, uh, in Portugal and I even started my master's in Portugal as well. Then I came here on Erasmus and then I just transferred myself here. And I finished my master's studies uh, uh, here. And I also, it wasn't a very difficult transition because my supervisor uh, from my master's thesis is also my PhD supervisor. And he was the one that invited me to stay. So uh, my research, what I'm doing, I already started there mm -hmm. and I'm just continuing. Um, but I've met a lot of PhD students that are just came here for PhD and uh, after that initial, the first year is a bit more for you to get to know your topic, get to know your supervisor, kind of get to know your environment, uh, but then they take off like the last, uh, the remaining three years, it's where you kind of just bloom <laughs> in, uh, in your research. Mm -hmm. um, is there something, well, you mentioned several things, but is there something that you really dislike about Lithuania? Like something that could be better or different that would make your life easier. Um, as a just to take it, yeah, just to take it as a very particular example, um, it would make so much easier my life if the Lithuanian uh, Research Council would just set up things in English, um, because. Uh, it seems that they say that they are open to foreigner researchers, but their website is very limited, the English information. And even when you apply for certain scholarships, um, as a PhD student, you have to fill the application in Lithuanian and you rely on uh, your colleagues to help you out and translate certain terms because um, then when you're writing something so scientific, then it kind of has to be very technical and even harder than uh, casual uh, Lithuanian. And that would make my life so much easier <laughs> if they finally would be more inclusive. Um, and it would also make uh, just have overall... Um, uh, also, this is a very stupid example, but... Uh, um, when you go to the supermarket, and usually when you buy something, um, you know that in several products you can have, uh, especially products that are not produced in the Baltics, you have like, uh, you can have the English uh, uh, labels and so several other languages, right? And they always stick the, like put a sticker with the Lithuanian translation on top of the English translation. <laughs> and sometimes leave like the Arabic and Greek uh, on and I was like why you guys could just put it on the other side and that also would make my life easier sometimes to read certain uh, <laughs> foods <laughs> that I'm buying an example <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, do you have any advice for other students who like maybe are interested in studying abroad but don't know where to start or are sort of afraid to, to go abroad and, and study in a different country from their own? Is there any advice that you could give them? Um, I would say um, if you're a person that uh, does does not require um, that you do like uh, calm places. Obviously, coming for countries that are a bit smaller is 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 better. And uh, even after the initial shock, uh, don't be afraid of trying to uh, like. Don't take some things personally that the natives do because sometimes they are just as uncomfortable as you are. Um, so I kind of had to learn how that some some reactions were not due to me. It was not my fault. It was just how people uh, are. Um, and uh, you you kind of have to understand that the cultural shock goes both ways, both in the the natives and both to you. Um, but also don't be afraid of uh, trying to. Um, like if you see that the Lithuanians are shy and they usually are, if you start to pushing to talk with them, they will start talking to you, even if it's slower, but you usually have to take the first step. Otherwise you will just look at each other. Uh, so don't be afraid of also doing that. It's, it's a good experience. One more question from, from the chat. Um... Why did you choose to pursue PhD in Lithuania and not on, in any other European country? Um, well, first, as I mentioned, I was invited uh, right. by my, my PhD supervisor. And even back at the time, um, so Lithuanian, uh, so PhD students were still getting a very small scholarship in my first year. Um, but the environment was a bit less competitive and I personally thought that maybe I wouldn't get a chance. I didn't have a lot of self-confidence to be honest back at the time. Uh, perhaps <laughs> um, uh, so perhaps if I would go back I would have figured if I had other options but I don't regret it uh, studying. Uh, but either way nowadays it's pretty good. Um, to study a PhD here, um, you get a pretty decent uh, scholarship, even bigger than some uh, salaries around Lithuania. Uh, the studies are usually very flexible. Of course, they depend a lot on the your supervisor, but they are usually very flexible. Um, and uh, most of the professors that I've met are very happy uh, to let the students Creative, creative uh, juices going on, uh, so that's very freeing uh, as well. And uh, you still have the opportunity, like uh, either to um, start teaching. Uh, they usually give their PhD students some uh, students on their own uh, to supervise or to teach laboratory works, like 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 I do. Um, you get the opportunity to collaborate in, in projects. Uh, you have also so many sorts of funding uh, that is relatively easy to do. Even though that's some, you do have to file the application in Lithuanian, but it's 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 a good uh, it's a good life. I would say very uh, decent, and you can, if you like research, you can conduct it without suffering uh, financially. Good. I'm I'm happy that it's it's uh, working out for you as a, as a student, and I guess I won't keep you for that much longer, Anna. I really appreciate uh, for you sharing us the insights of uh, studying abroad and, and being a, a student in Lithuania. Um, so I really appreciate it and would like to wish you the best in your studies. And Thank you and I hope I helped someone yeah, <laughs> deciding. Yeah. I, I hope so too and I'm, I'm sure you will. And um, and uh, to everyone who has been watching and asking questions, I hope you enjoyed our chat. And um, please follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram if you haven't yet. And um, you know, we'll upload more information about study opportunities, about uh, student success and uh, the Lithuanian daily life. So stay tuned for the further episodes and thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Anna.
Okay, goodbye.